Uh, do you consider yourself a uh, futurist of sorts? No. No? All right. A more well, realist. Well, this question's probably not for you then, but do you ever... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, but, but, but I'll direct it at you anyway. proceed with your question. But, uh, uh, what are your thoughts on the possibility of interstellar travel? I don't know if that's necessarily your area of expertise, but just thinking... <laughs> that, I don't know. Okay, interstellar what, travel? All right, uh, the fastest hunk of hardware we have ever launched is the mission to Pluto right now, the New Horizons mission. It's, it's going like four times escape velocity from Earth, and it's going to leave the solar system after it swings by Pluto. It'll get to Pluto faster than any spacecraft ever would have gone that distance. It's a tiny spacecraft on the largest engines in our arsenal. You combine those two facts, laws of physics say this thing is going to be hauling, okay? It's going to get to Pluto by 2015. If you hitched a ride on that, it's the fastest thing we've ever launched. If you hitched, if you just grabbed on and didn't worry about food or want to come back or anything like that, at that speed, you would reach the nearest stars in about 35,000 years. So, um, we are hopelessly bound to the solar system in this regard. The distances between stars is vast. We would need to understand something new about the fabric of the space-time continuum and exploit that in order to expect to travel to the stars. Right. So, to travel to the stars and get there before you die. <laughs> you can imagine sending very fertile people on the mission and they just make babies, and they grow up, and they make babies, and they grow up, and then they'll get to their destination. But then you say, well, what was the point of that, you know? <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Where are you going, anyway? I mean, I'd want to know that there was, like, life there. Maybe what we would call intelligent life. Not so intelligent that it would think we were idiots, right? It's got to be kind of around our intelligence. Because <laughs> it could be so smart that we're just blithering idiots in their presence. And why would they, like, if worms came up to your leg, would you want to start a conversation with them? <laughs> that would not be an interesting thing for you, you to do in your day. <clears throat> it's conceivable that there are species out there so intelligent that that's how they view us. That's possible. Uh, so, no, don't, don't be holding your breath on traveling to the stars. Planets, yes. Stars, no. All right. Oh, oh by the way, just while you're there, um, you know, in, in Star Trek, they got around this problem because they had warp drives. So if, if this is like the galaxy, and they're on one side, and they want to get to the other side. Let's go on this side, one side. And so they turn on their warp engines, and they would bend the fabric of space, because the diameter of the galaxy is 100,000 light years. If you traveled as fast as light, it would take you 100,000 years to cross the galaxy. Okay. At least everyone on Earth would wait that long for you to get there. So, so what they did was they bend space and then take a little bridge across, the, and then they unbend it back. And that's how they get across the galaxy during the TV commercial. That's how that works, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be a really boring show. <laughs> we don't have anything like that. In spite of whatever they will show in the upcoming Star Trek movie. Yes. 